Hey, Profiteers, this is Kara Brothers with Positive Profit. Thanks for joining me on another episode. And I have a very special episode today. I have Diana Hughes, and she is with A Bark Above Bakery. And this is part of our Meet the Baker series that we're featuring in our Dog Treat Baker Facebook group. So if you're not a part of this group already, you better get on over there. We're talking everything dog treat related, and you can get to it by going to facebook.com slash groups slash start a dog treat biz. Hey, Baker, do you want to launch your own dog treat business and make money for your family? Are you discouraged with just giving your dog treats away to friends and family instead of having booming online sales? Do you want to be home more to bake treats and make money selling them online? But you keep telling yourself that you don't know enough healthy dog treat recipes or even have the business or Instagram know-how to make it all happen? Girl, I hear you. In this podcast, you'll find natural dog treat recipes and the secrets to launching your own dog treat business and tips for growing a successful dog treat business. Hi, my name is Kara Brothers, and I learned how to make and sell healthy dog treats that customers want to buy and dogs love. And I started my very own successful dog treat business. Want to know how I did it? Give your dog a treat, grab one for yourself, and let's dig in. Without further ado, hi, Diana. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? Excellent. The weather is rather weird. So if you hear a lot of rain, I guess our walls are kind of thin. And so when it rains really hard, you might hear it. So that's <laughs> okay. That's okay. What, what state do you live in? Florida. Oh, okay. So you guys get all kinds of weird weather too, don't do you? This, this winter has been very rainy. So mm -hmm. yeah, we've had to cancel a couple of markets and every because of the rain, because mm -hmm. you don't want to be out there in the with your treats in the rain. <laughs> it is no fun. No, <laughs> normally during the winter months, we don't get much rain. So uh -huh. yeah, it's been, I guess, El Nino. This is the cause of the weird weather, I think. And you I don't get much rain there, right? In California, most, most of the time. Well, we live in Northern California, so we do okay. get our fair share of rain, but I have lived in other parts of California, not so much, but um, I'm in oh, the, the foothills in a small little town and we get all kinds of rain, <laughs> which I mean, obviously well, that's we need a good it. Thing. Yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> yeah. And I still haven't learned the difference between El Nino and La Nina. Oh, yeah. La Nina. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Weather. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so your business, A Bark Above Bakery, tell me when you started, tell me how you got started. What's your journey been oh, like? Well, it, it's been a journey for sure. I watch my grandkids during the day for my daughters to work, and I have five, but one was in school. So I helped pick him up here and there, and he's now 13, and he's autistic, so, but high-functioning, wonderful young man now, and I have four little ones. So I, one started kindergarten this year. The other one is in VPK, two girls, Kyra and Mariana. And so Kyra's in kindergarten, Mariana's in VPK. So I have the two little boys still. And I wanted to do something that I could do at home while I'm watching them and I can still help my family and make money at the same time and do something that I love. And I, I'm a baker at heart anyway, so something that I've always liked to do and kitchen is my thing. So we got a bulldog. She's almost 10 now. And she was very, she has allergies. Don't know what trigger cell, but she would eat certain things and she'd burn hives or chew on her paws or lick excessively. So I couldn't figure out what it was. So my husband said, why don't you just make her some treats? So that's how it kind of started. I started making her treats. And then for Christmas, I'd make my kids their dogs treats for Christmas and put them in nice little containers and everything. And so when I started about thinking about trying to figure out what I wanted to do for myself, I, you know, my husband said, you should probably sell the dog treats, you know? And I thought, you think, you know, so I started like looking the internet, you know, seeing if that's a thing or not a thing, you know, like I wasn't sure. And of course I ran across lots of great information, but the road wasn't 
smooth, you know, like for somebody who hasn't ever started a business before it, it's not well mapped out. <laughs> so it's kind of like learn as you go, trial and error, lots of tears, but lots of happy times, you know, trying to think, am I doing the right thing? Is this, but you know, you want it to be all legal. You want it to be where, you know, you protect yourself and the pets that you're giving food to, you want to, you want them to be reassured that you are giving them things that are wholesome and good for them and not, you know, just flying by the seat of your pants and just making something that could be harmful. You want to have that backing of being legal and everything being tested and state approved and so uh, hoops to jump through, but so worth it. <laughs> it's been so, so worth it. And uh, so, yeah, so I, uh, you know, started a little test pool. My husband works at a place called Tropicana, can of orange juice. And so a lot of his employees, people there, you know, coworkers, uh, jumped aboard and became our testers taste testers and their customers today still. And uh, I wasn't sure how to get into the markets. At first, it was very difficult. We bought a really nice big tent with the logo on it. And it, it's amazing, but not easy to put up. So, yeah. you know, when I'm thinking about yeah. something doing for myself, you know, that I wanted to go to the markets, be able to be self-sufficient. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, needs two people. You're not going to go just to go and sell treats and be done with it. It It's so much preparation <laughs> before, so much prep after to do it right. And uh, so that's really how I started. I started in um, June of 2020, just laying the groundwork. And then in September, I went to like a dog conference, which you got to meet other people that were doing the same kind of thing. But in what I, that's what I think I love most about this business is that so many people are doing similar things but yet so different. And you can go to a market and maybe somebody is selling treats down the way. I don't know, but they're different than what you have. Everyone has their own twist. It's what's in here that it, it transforms in the treats. And it just, everything looks different. Everybody's presentation is different. And I think that's what I love most about it, you know, is that it's just, it's your own unique way of expressing yourself. I, I and, agree with you. I think that there's room for everyone in the dog treat business absolutely. world. Because just like mm -hmm. you said, just because you're doing your treats one way, someone else could do them totally different, have a right. different setup. They're going to have different packaging, different marketing, different branding. They're going to have their own spin on treats, their their own way of doing things. And that's why I really think that Number one, there is room for everyone in this in this industry. But number right. two, I think it's really important to know that just because they're a competitor, it's actually a good thing because oh, yes. there are customers looking for all different kinds of things and to give them a variety is something that you would want as a customer as well. So it's yeah. that everyone's out there. And, you know, with our Dog Treat Baker Facebook group, I love, I, oh, so this too. is like my home. This is like my home base. And I love it because everyone's doing things a little bit differently and I'll learn from this person or I'll go, wow, with that person. Like I've never seen or heard of some of the things that they're doing. So I really appreciate all the diversity within this group. And I do have a question about this dog conference. Tell, can you tell me about that? It was through Diva Dog. Yes. And they had a conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. This was before I started selling my first dog treat. I mean, mm -hmm. I only had like a couple of treats that I made for my dog, but I wasn't sure how to go about it. I didn't know if I wanted to do Etsy or if I wanted to be on Shopify. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I wanted to decorate treats or just keep them plain. I was, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know anything, yeah. anything other than just what I created myself. I made some connections there that were really great. And you were, I met someone from Florida. 
She is in Miami, but she was able to give me information of how to go about sending my treats off and getting mm. them, you know, approved through the state of Florida. You could reach out to people, but not until I started the dog treat bakers group did there really come full circle with really being able to get a lot of questions answered. So it was, yeah, it was very positive. I love how people are willing to share. If I share something on there and someone messages me and says, hey, you know, do you have a recipe for that? Or is, do you have a GA? Of course I do. I share it because yeah. to me, that's what it's about. You know, I want someone else to succeed. I'm becoming a success by just trial and error, you know, sure. and learning from others, you know. So it's it's been a, such a positive thing. And I couldn't do it without my family. You know, my oh, family support yeah. system. Isn't you know, my truth? son comes, helps me. You know, he helps me set up sometimes. My husband is there to help me set up and break down. And my girls, my both my daughters and their husbands, they all <laughs> come and help me. My granddaughters help me bake the treats. And it's just like, it's a whole family affair, basically. And uh, I couldn't have done it without them. The whole dog conference thing, though, that gave me the inspiration that I saw people doing it, met them, talked with them. And that was the excitement. Okay, people really do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it does take a village. <laughs> For yes. this business, I haven't met anyone yet that is just, hey, I just do it all by myself. Unless it's yeah. like a, a real side sometimes thing. But it was my thing. It was my business. It was what I did. Yeah. Pretty soon, as I became busier and busier, then I needed people to help me bake. Right. And package right. and then the events. You yes. can't do that by yourself. I'm yes. Well, I, 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 oh my gosh. Yeah. I have one market that I do full time. Now mm -hmm. I just joined another market that's full time. So I do Wednesdays and Saturdays. Oh great. and then once a month on Sunday. So that's as far as I've gotten so far. But my daughter, my oldest daughter, DeAndra, is gonna come and join me in September of this year. Amazing. So I can do more markets because I just can't. I mean, I'm in the kitchen sometimes from sun up to sundown. And like I have one sister who's asking me, Well, how much, how much are you actually making? Don't know. Right <laughs> now. No, it's like I am making money. I know that. But yeah. it's just like it's so hard to slow down to try to figure everything out. Cause last year was a watch. I only, well, not I shouldn't say last year. 2022, mm -hmm. I didn't do any markets. I just prepped and did all that. And then in 2023, not until June, did I have my first market. Mm. But I apply. It's just getting in. It's mm -hmm. like, it's so hard to find that opening. And once you do and your name gets out there, then then they're coming to you saying, right. Hey, and do you yeah. want to do the mark? You know, and I'm like, wow. Isn't that great? So, yes, yes. And I also just started, like, there's a non-kill shelter here in our area called Satchel's Last Resort. And it is a, a true non-kill shelter. So I'm starting to, like, I just took my first donation over there to them for, you know, I wasn't going to take back to the market, like holiday kind of, you know, all my Valentine's Day things. Sure. That, and I just sent that over there and, you know, just reaching out. I'm going to find other areas, er, other ones that are here in our community. And, you know, just trying to reach out that way, too, because I want it to be a positive thing. I don't want to. And I really didn't do it for the money, but that is a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, well, it helps you to keep doing it. You know, it helps you to, yes. to keep furthering you know, what you love yes. and what you're passionate about. And actually, you know, bakers out there, Diana mm -hmm. has a really good point and a really good tip that if you have leftover treats from your holidays, because when do we ever just bake enough? We always right. have an extra, right? I yes. mean, and no one really cares so much about Valentine's Day hearts and, and X's and O's on February 15th, right? So right. <laughs> donating them to a shelter is a fantastic way to be able to treat the pets there and be able to use up your leftovers. And it's a donation as well. Well, speaking mm -hmm. of treats, tell me what kind of treats do you make? What are your, some of your faves? 
Okay. Well, let's see here. I'll show you. And, uh, and it's funny because when I first started doing the markets, I was going to do just like six treats or seven treats, like to take and then rotate them. Well, it didn't quite work out like because, you know, some people would come just for that particular tree. Even if it was two or three people, I still wanted to have it available. So then before you know it, I'm like bringing almost everything. <laughs> if we could, yeah. it's so hard yeah. to keep up. But I did, let me, can I turn it over? Let's see here. Okay. So are the maple bacon loaf, but I make them in a pup cake. Oh, cute. And and then I do like my birthday cake here, but I do them in a pup cake. And I bring those to the market and every week they sell every single week. Wow. And then this is a blueberry coconut with blueberry drizzle. Oh, it looks great. And this is a peanut butter banana with a carob peanut butter drizzle. And this is a pumpkin cinnamon. And then this is a carob peanut butter waffle. Carrot peanut butter banana, actually. And then over here, I have, let me see here. This is chicken bacon cheddar. Oh, yum. And then I have peanut, apple peanut butter with peanut butter drizzle. And then carrot peanut butter banana with wow. uh, peanut butter drizzle. So, yeah, I have a lot of different. And then waffles are very popular. This one here is a uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. Isn't that the cutest size? I'm living for that <laughs> tiny waffle. They're adorable. Yeah, yeah. they're adorable. And this is a strawberry cream cheese, and you can see the strawberries in it. I, wow. Now, and then, are these individual waffle makers, or are they different irons that you swap out? Yeah, I do uh, a mini that make a circle, mm -hmm. and I think there's eight at a time, but I have two that going at the same time. Oh, sure you do. And then this one also, it has... It has different sizes, but it has five of these sizes, so I have two of them going. Right. You're a little factory, factory a little, home fac little home factory over, over there. And then something that I made that I did not know if I did it mostly because people ask me to make cat treats. Oh, so right. I made a tuna parmesan. Oh gosh, wow! And do you know these? These sell out almost every week, and I have customers that come just for these, not for cats, for dogs, but some, <laughs> some for cats too. But oh, that's that funny. is hysterical. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's what I have. So, and then, of course, the dog cake. Your cake looks fabulous. Hello, baby. What's your baby That's name? A... Racy. This is Racy. Hey, Racy. And she's, she'll fit right up here with me. She's like, what do I want to call her? Like a mascot, but she sure. don't sure. leave my side. She seems very well behaved that she's not jumping across the table getting to all those trees. Uh, you know what? And okay, and this is another thing. My son came one day when it was the day before a market and you know how like the big thaw out and the big you know you're taking everything out of the freezer and I had mm -hmm. like two mm -hmm. or three tables out with you know all these treats on them and everything and my son was like what are you doing what's going on here <laughs> I was like what are we supposed to do right so he got me this baker's cart if you can see that yep but that has been a lifesaver for me. And mostly all my treats fit on there. It has 20 shelves on it. And it just, that has helped so much because even with the way bag and tag after they're thawed out and everything, it's like each one has a different flavor and you can just, you know, start way bagging and tagging and it's not all over your house. Oh, I was like, oh no, we got to do something about this. What a find. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, I'm sure you gave him a big hug for that because oh, um, keeping, yes. where do you put all of these treats that you're thawing out that are different I categories? A, right. I, I'm I so have glad you got that. Freezer. Mm -hmm. I have a huge freezer upright. It's like an upright. And uh, I have, I put them in like Ziploc bags. I, like I said, I have had trial and error of everything. So what I do is after I bake them and they've gotten to room temperature, I put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer open and then let them get cold, freeze them a little bit and then put them in the bag because right. then you don't get any condensation in the bag. Yeah. That's a great, great so tip. That works so good. And then when you take them out, they're not wet. 
Right. And they're not sticking together. (laughs) Because I didn't know that. I, you know, because the first time I did it is like, oh my gosh, they're all like wet. And then you Mm got to dry. It was just Mm -hmm. terrible. So So it's little things you learn. Oh, I know. And, you know, you don't know it all at at, at the beginning. This is a, re- a real learn as you go thing, just like you said. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So question I for you. I had no I... idea, you know, the trials and errors I would have, you know, doing this. It's like, yeah. oh my goodness, one more thing, yeah. one more thing. But yeah, so, and then put them in field tight containers and they're all labeled. So you, I you put them in what kind of containers? Like sealed tight containers, like mm-hmm. like Rubbermaid yeah. kind of things. Mm-hmm. And each one are like they're labeled on there yeah. what they are. And they're all in categories. Like the top part is all my savories and then the sweet and then the waffles. And so, yeah, so I know exactly what I have. It's easy to keep inventory that way. And hooray for oops. organization. I have a couple oh. questions for you about your treats. Do you freeze them before or after the drizzle? I freeze them before when okay. I take them out and they thaw out. That's when I put the drizzle on them because I find that the drizzle will get a little bit or mm-hmm. it will get to where like when you touch it, it'll flake off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't want to freeze it with the drizzle on there until I absolutely <laughs> But so I now, and like I said, I've learned a lot too, even with the drizzles, because at first they were, now they kind of lay a little more flat on the cookie where I have to make it a, just a tad more runnier, a mm-hmm. little more water because I'll use like tapioca starch and like blueberry juice, but I have to make it just a little more runny because if I make it too hard, then it will just come right off if yeah if it lays more flat then it's good to go you can freeze it and it still looks the same when you take it out but you know it's kind of like everything else they don't come out exactly <laughs> each time right. you do it, it no like, i know i know and it's like gosh how do i do this yeah even if you use the same ingredients in the yep. same amount it's still that way. <laughs> no i know so. that's a it's a funny phenomenon isn't it I guess it is. Next question. Do you dehydrate your treats? I do not. Most of the people that are at my markets anyway, I mean, they'll say, do you have a soft treat? I say they're all soft. They're like, "Mm." now, the only thing is, it's like if I do the advent calendars or Mm -hmm. something that I'm going to, then I will. And with your help, I was able to accomplish that because I had never dehydrated before. But mm-hmm. I did just buy, well, my husband bought me for Christmas a really nice dehydrator. So, you know, I think I will experiment a little bit. I want to make some like jerky chews kind of. Yes. I want to get into that a little bit. And yeah, so that's kind of where we're headed on on that front. So we're going to add to the line Mm -hmm. whenever we start the markets in the fall so great yeah new stuff people always love new stuff they they want yeah first to buy it so that's exciting yeah Uh, yeah so it's a little different that'll be more my husband's speed than mine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm I'm the baker i'm not a i'm not the jerky guy (laughs) hey well turn them loose turn them loose on the jerky yeah right (laughs) and then for your for your treats do you put them like for the bones? How do you package those? Are you doing craft stand-up bags that seal at the top or how are you packaging? Uh, those? No, I, I normally use cello bags. Oh, yes. And I do them by ounces. So four ounce, eight ounce. Because, well, and honestly, at the markets now, just now I'm starting to use eight ounce bags because mm-hmm. I pack mostly four ounce because especially if people have never tried the treat, they're mm-hmm. not going to pay $9, you know, versus $5, you know, right. where they could try and drink. And I definitely, I bring samples. I have samples at the market. The dogs try them and I, and I get this a lot, you know, oh, my dog's fussy. They, he won't he'll, eat it. He, he'll eat it. Definitely. Yeah. The next thing you know, they're buying it. And, you know, so that's really a, a fun thing, you know, to see. But some of the little dogs are very, very picky. <laughs> Sometimes I have to, you know, like, well, just take it. And if he eats it and, you know, come back. Otherwise, you know, hopefully you find something that 
the yeah. like. So yeah. <laughs> So do you have a website or how do people order when you're not at the market? I do have like just Facebook and Instagram. So I have had people email me. Mm -hmm. um, I've And like my, of course, my menus posted on Facebook and on my, on the page that my Bark Above page and on Instagram. But we are, by May, I will have a website because and well, because if, you know, during the summer months when we're not in the markets, if people still wanted to order, they could. So, yeah. So we're working on that now. And Good. It's, uh, That's a process. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is a process. It really is. And I do have, I did get on through our market. We have a place called Shop Where You Live. Mm. And I am on that. So I have not gotten any orders, but honestly, it's it's a little hard to figure out. I've gone on there. I've posted the pictures. I'm really not sure if it's operating properly. So I definitely, when I slow down enough, I will try to figure it out. It's just, you know, to take the time to get a hold of someone, to see, you know, what it is that if I'm even up and running, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but... So that is an avenue that I'm going to be able to use eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So good. Now, when yeah. people order from you, like on your, you have a Facebook page or a Facebook group right. or, okay. Uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Facebook page. And then your Instagram. Do you have like a Google form they fill out that has all your trees and they just put what they want or do they just tell they you just, in a DM or yeah, email? Yeah, tell me okay. in a DM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Great. so far. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll. Apple pay me or, you know, send mm -hmm. it in that way. And uh, yeah, so or a lot of times, like I said, my where my husband works, I have a lot of faithful customers through there. And so they'll just tell him and I make them <laughs> yeah. and they, and so that's kind of how that works. But, yes. but I definitely have had people email me too, you mm -hmm. know, like they, they see the menu or I send them the menu. They'll, they'll mm -hmm. message me because they got my card or something and they'll order the treats. And then sometimes I'll just bring them to the market and they'll pick them up there. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that's great. so far that's working. So. Well, do you do wholesale or consignment? Are you in any, any shops? No, I'm not. I have not. I've had a lot of people ask me. Mm-hmm. But I don't know enough about the wholesale. And like I said, just starting the markets, I, because what I did is in October of last year, cause so, so like the middle of September, I applied for my first market and, well, not really my first, but it was like the first full-time market that I had applied to. And I was doing one, my friend owns a business called Lava Nutrition. And she, uh, the last week of September always has a fall festival kind of thing at her location. And I was a vendor there. And so then that very next week I was accepted for the full-time market. So I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I've been like awesome. flying by the feet of my baking and I need it. And so I'm yeah. hoping over the summer, you know, when things slow down a little bit, I can get a little bit more able to and feel like I'm, you know, not feeling so much pressure mm -hmm. every week of like right. getting prepared and then things have to waylay like onto the side, like, like that shop where I live. I just, I haven't been able to get to it, you know, with mm -hmm. taxes and, you know, and that, oh yeah, that's a whole nother. <laughs> you know? That is like, a can of worms. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It's, you know, just staying organized. You know, yeah, so. it, it's a needed part when we think about all the things, all the different tasks we have as, you know, in our dog treat business, certainly setting aside a portion of a day, you know, even just one portion of a day once a week or maybe a couple mm -hmm. times a month just to work on those kinds of business things where you're optimizing your website, you're looking into, you know, like you're, you're talking about selling in your neighborhood and trying to figure out yeah. if there's a problem over here to be able to find the time to deal with right. it and, and fix it because you know that's going to help you. So it is, right. it is tough to stay organized in that way to do all the things. Um, right. Let's, let me ask you, do you use a pastry case at, um, at your market? 
No, I have not yet. Mm -hmm. I would like to get one though, because I, like I do have, you know, the, the pastries that I do with the, my little pup cakes yeah. and I do, sometimes I'll do the little donuts and I don't ever bring cakes, but mm -hmm. you know, I, what I do is I put them in a photo album, like every cake I make yeah. and I put them in that photo album and people flip through them all the time. That's great. And so that's a good way to advertise, you know, that you do do, you know, cakes. And yes. I have done quite a few, actually. I'm surprised. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, who's going to pay $25, $30 for a dog? They do. But they do. I know. They do. They, I have one girl that yeah. she, every, I've done like three, I think, for her. She has two dogs. So <laughs> the next one's coming up here pretty soon. So oh, my It'll be gosh. like four, four cakes just for that family. You yeah. Know? Wow. That, so she always that, does that. That's great. When they come in and say, hey, do you make cakes? I would instantly get out my Instagram and say, yes, I do. Because I put them all on Instagram. And then so that's right. a good opportunity conversation started for them to follow me, you know, and, and kind of go from there. But a photo album is a great idea. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's right there at the market. And it was so funny because one day I'm at the market and this this white, husband and wife, they were flipping through the book. And she says, oh, that looks familiar. And she said, my brother's sweat dog. <laughs> Oh, small world. You're a dog baker, I think. Yeah. Oh. It was so funny because she was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny how they, because the picture of the dog and the cake was in there that they sent me. Yeah, I love that, you know, that's one thing I do try to get people to do is that, you know, when you, when they get home and the dog's enjoying the tree, you know, just, you know, send it to me so I can share it, you know, so yeah. that way they know, you know, because it's just great advertisement. Well, what is next for a bark above? What's what's on the horizon for you? Like, what are you making any new treats? Are you getting ready for St. Patrick's Day or Easter? Or, well, definitely gonna do a few St. Patrick's Day things. Some, but you know, I I've also this is a, like a trial and error thing that you do. You know, like I bought all the cello bags and I put all all my treats in fall bags, and people were like. Well, where it was in a pink bag last time. It was in a, you know, it was in a, uh, oh, I'm only going to use like, I'll, I'll do specialty treats mm -hmm. and those specialties will go in those particular bags. Cause sometimes I can go overboard with. Oh, I hear you. I, my ideas, they runneth wild. <laughs> and then I'm yes, like, oh my too. gosh, I've overcommitted. I'm yeah, doing what did I do here? Right. Yeah, um, exactly. But um, next, uh, I think the next, you know, my daughter's going to come on board in October, well, September. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can start broadening my horizons a little bit, maybe get into a couple more markets. You know, uh, during the summer, I want to go to a few of the the doggy daycares and the day camps and things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bring treats and things that you know vet offices groomers the problem with me though is that I don't dehydrate so my treats are have a short shelf life if you do not put them in the fridge mm -hmm. so I guess you know that would be something I would have to visit if I wanted to do wholesale I would have to dehydrate and does that change the, the taste or? of the oh well, the taste it will definitely yeah. change the I would have to definitely you know send them off to do that yeah. but I don't know it just like would it be the same I mean I don't know I just You'll I think have that's to what ask makes it different <laughs> yes I you know because she definitely likes the soft treats I mean she'll do anything for one oh well we are just about out of time I want to thank you so much for coming on the show telling us who you are what you do a bark above bakery. And tell folks how they can get a hold of you on Facebook or Instagram. It just says a bark above dog bakery. 